All right, so we should be live now. If you are just tuning in, I'm Amber. I am one of the co-organizers of WordPress Accessibility Day, and I'm super excited to be here today with um, some team members from one of our amazing sponsors, the Yoast team, and I'm let you all introduce yourself and then maybe tell us, in case anyone's been living under a rock, what Yoast is if someone isn't familiar with Yoast. So, Marika, you do the honors. Should I kick it off? <laughs> yes. um, hello, everybody. Really exciting uh, to be here. My name is Marika van der Raks. I used to be one of the owners, and I also used to be the CEO of Yoast, but Yoast has been sold about a year ago to Newful Digital. Uh, I'm still with the company. I am now the chief growth officer. So I do all kinds of things that are related to growth. If you don't know what Yoast is, I think Yoast is most famous for our WordPress SEO plugin, which makes sure that your um, um, website ranks high in Google. That's basically what we do. Um, so, and Taco, who are you? Yeah, hi, I'm Taco. I'm the head of relations at Yoast, uh, in that role responsible for support, but also talking to people in general, uh, preferably at WordCamps and other WordPress events. Um, yeah, I've been with Yoast for uh, just over nine years, and it's been uh, fun since. Wilhelmine. Hey, thanks. Yeah, super excited to be here too. Um, I've been with Yoast now for about, like seven years, been part of the marketing team, and a big chunk of that was as a manager of content. So I'm responsible for the content on Yoast.com. And uh, yeah, that's super fun. And uh, in that role, of course, we've written about accessibility and also um, made sure our own content is accessible. So yeah, it's a bit in short. Okay. So um, what made you all interested in sponsoring WordPress Accessibility Day? Yeah, so since I was uh, kind of responsible for that, let me, let me take this one. Yeah. Um, our, our mission at Yoast is SEO for everyone. And there is no everyone if your website is not accessible. So it was an, an easy sell, basically. Um, we want to support those who make WordPress accessible and uh, support those who need WordPress to be accessible. And you know, if it's accessible, it's usually also SEO friendly. So do those two things go hand in hand. So even, even for people that don't necessarily care about making their website accessible, you should do it anyway if you care about ranking high in the search engines. Th these things are just, well, they, they go well together. Yeah, so there, there is a lot of overlap there. Yeah. Could you maybe highlight some areas where you think making accessibility improvement or where we've seen proof that making accessibility improvements to the website can help with better search engine ranking? Well, I think you should you should see Google as, well, Google is, is not a real person. It tries to mimic a human being, but it can't. So if you help Google to understand it, um, um, you probably are also helping people to understand it and also people that are visually impaired, for instance, because Google kind of is that as well. Google is not that good in images or at least not in images without text, um, which is an example, I think, for which is good for SEO and good for accessibility. The other one is readability. If sentences are really, really lengthy, it gets hard for everybody to read it, um, especially if you if you have to listen to text if you use a screen reader. Um, and that goes for Google as well. Google is not that good in reading really lengthy, hard sentences. So that's another example. Do you have other examples, Wilhelmine or Taco? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say headings is a good one because yeah. headings describe your content. So it describes what, what the paragraph is about. And it also helps assistive technology to help comprehend the text better. And and that counts just as much for Google as it, as it counts for um, assistive technology. So I think headings is a great example. And um, alt text for images, like Marika said. Yeah, I think in general, all the things that provide context or descriptions, um, that, that's just good for accessibility and SEO. 
And there's a lot too with um, page speed now, right? Where that matters. And I feel like I see a lot where if there's a whole bunch of things flying in and like crazy JavaScript happening, that can be challenging for certain users with if they have traumatic brain injuries or if they get dizzy um, or even low vision people. And I feel like there'd probably be an overlap there as well by removing some of that where it would help your SEO, I think, make your website go faster. Yes. And let people do what you want them to do on a site. So we were, we were never a big fan of the slider things that come into your website or all the moving parts because people don't know where to watch. They don't just don't know where to look on your site and what to do. So those kind of stuff aren't good for your conversion or getting people to click on where you want to click either. So that's yeah. not a good best practice at all, not for search engine optimization, but also not for, well, just don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for and sure. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, uh, reviewing a website just the other day. And since it is autumn, they had falling leaves as JavaScript loaded. Um, really? Which is not only horrible as a user who can see, but it, <laughs> it threw um, images with alt tags on them across the screen, have them moving uh, all the time. And it was like, 12 megs of JavaScript. So in accessibility and in SEO and in site speed and everything, it's just horrible and don't. I feel <laughs> like I haven't seen things falling down a page since like MySpace, like Snowflakes. So nope. it's crazy yeah. to me to think that somebody did that in 2022. <laughs> it still exists. Yes. But people like to stand out, only sometimes they choose the wrong ways on a website <laughs> the wrong ways to stand yeah. out yeah <laughs> um so i have really gotten a lot out of the different articles and resources that you all on have on your website as i've kind of tried to improve my seo knowledge and i noticed um somewhat recently that you have a bunch about accessibility as well um which I'll post a link for people in the recap post. Um, but if you go on Yoast.com and you just search accessibility or there's a tag, um, yeah. so it's like slash tag slash accessibility, there's a bunch. And I was wondering if there are any articles that you all would want to highlight or that would be helpful for someone to read if they're, they're trying to learn more about that overlap between accessibility and SEO. Mm, yeah, I think the the most important one is to is the how to improve the accessibility of your website. The title is quite descriptive <laughs> of what it uh, what it is about, so I would recommend to read that one uh, definitely because it just gives you like some of the major um, points that you should definitely have on your website to make sure it's accessible. Um, then we have a nice one about social media because that's sometimes not you know people don't a website people think earlier oh yeah we have to also think about accessibility social might be a bit newer so we have one on um improving uh, your social channels to make sure those are accessible and um we have one how you can use the blog editor in wordpress to also check some uh accessibility uh things in your post so that's i think that's also a super nice one they're all quite you know, straightforward, just tips, very practical. So definitely a recommendation to read those, at least those. <laughs> awesome, great. I'll, and I'll definitely make sure to post links to those. So I know yeah. I definitely found a lot that was helpful. Um, so I'm really curious to hear more about, and I know Taco and I chatted about this a little bit at WordCamp US, about your new inclusive language feature that's part of Yoast SEO Premium. And I'm embarrassed to say that I have not tried it yet, <laughs> but I keep wanting to. And I, I'm hoping maybe for people who haven't heard about it, could you share a little bit about that and how I'm hoping or assuming that it might help people write in language that is more disability friendly? Um, yeah. If they're writing about disabilities in their content, yeah. So what? Is that true? what we, yeah, yeah. Um, what we did is we um, 
And so we, we researched quite extensively because this is a hard topic. And, and also we're not native English speakers and this, um, this check is, is for English and we're going to extend it to, to multiple languages. But this is very language specific. What yeah. is offensive in one language is not offensive in the other one. I saw that because I didn't know <laughs> in English that certain things weren't you you weren't supposed to say that because I'm just Dutch and in in Dutch it's we have other things that are offensive um so but we made we made some checks about uh, people with disabilities as well and how you should not <laughs> approach them or um describe them and make sure that you have a text that is inclusive so what we do is we check all kinds of phrases that could potentially be um, offensive or uh, not inclusive, and then uh, make you aware of that when you uh, use a certain phrase or something. Um, I think it could be a really good first step because you can never, you can't, we can't just say, oh, your writing is inclusive because um, we, you, you never know what, what somebody is writing about and, and our technology is not capable of really grasping that but we can say that we didn't detect anything that could potentially be uh, offensive and that's a really good first step and I think it would help especially if you're not a native English writer to to to, to turn that that um, check on and see whether or not you're in fact um, doing the best you can in writing something that's inclusive which is something that Google cares about as well Google has hmm. already send some tweets about about that and, and Google wants to have uh, an audience that's really large and and ha has to, wants you to write in a way that's uh, inviting and welcoming to as much people as possible so it could really benefit for your SEO as well to write in a way that's open and inclusive for everybody. Yeah, I didn't even realize that Google was kind of looking at language or is it mostly do you think bounce rate? That would trigger that. So if something is offensive, it might have a higher bounce rate, and then it will. I think Google well, or... Google is really, really good in reading texts as well. So is, they will have similar analysis as we have, and 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 I think also would um, red flag some terms or words mm -hmm. that you're using. I don't think it's in the um, algorithm yet, but they are talking about it more and more, and I think. Um, I think it will be something that will be on everybody's agenda because we as a world should do better. And Google is definitely in that conversation as well. But we never really know what Google does because they never tell us. So this is also me with a crystal ball thinking about <laughs> Google. Yeah. Well, and, and if you're uh, US based and you go to about.google, uh, you will also see that they've listed quite a few articles on uh, inclusive marketing, for example. So inclusivity definitely is something that they are starting to be more vocal about. So it's mm -hmm. not just a crystal ball, Marike. No, 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 it's not. But I'm so if I say something now and, and then someone else said, but Marike from you said that, that and then I, True. Yeah. I have to like defend myself on Twitter again. Hmm. It also ties in nicely with the helpful content update. I think yeah. you want to be help, make helpful content by people for people, and then make it accessible to everyone. So for everyone, inclusive. Yeah, yeah. So for everyone. So I think it aligns nicely with what what yeah the other things they do. Yeah. I, so it, does it just does it just catch words, or is it able to detect phrases too? The latter. So, the latter uh, phrases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because sometimes it depends on context whether or not mm -hmm. uh, something is inclusive or not. Uh, things I've learned is that the term seniors, referring to senior citizens, is not quite okay. Um, whereas really? you're talking about a senior in high school. That's obviously okay. So it, it is context dependent and um, we're doing a pretty good job to keep that context in uh, yeah in mind when giving the, the tips. That's neat. And so can you tease what languages might be coming next or not yet? <laughs> I think they're talking about Dutch because that's our native language, which makes it easy for, mm -hmm. easier for us. 
I don't know if we talked about anything else yet. So Eng Engli English, English, really different word, is our main language. So that that's a no-brainer to do that first. I think that mm -hmm. could be a good second. Spanish is our second language, I think. So that would be on our list as well to do mm -hmm. Spanish. Yeah. I think it's really neat. I think, yeah. and it's it's cool that you guys are expanding beyond and kind of going, because I really do think a lot of just making good websites that people want to use, there's a lot of little nuanced things that go into it. And it's neat to have tools that can guide you into that. Yeah. And you learn. <laughs> You also learn a lot from our checks doing it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I learned a lot about about inclusivity and um about uh um how how we what words I should not use and why. So we had this awesome he he did a PhD, I think, in this in this field, and he 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 came to work with us on a project basis, but he did a wonderful job in researching um this entire field. And I've learned a lot. In, in just looking at what he did. Yeah. So do you feel like doing this has maybe changed some of the ways that you communicate internally as a company even? We're really aware. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Wait, maybe yes. became even more aware. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, but, but also still, I, think... I learned a lot uh, from yeah. just the checks and testing the feature and, and all of that because yeah. um, it, oftentimes the devil's in the details and in a second language those details are just that much harder yeah. um so yeah i i keep learning from our own plugin that's great so i'm curious is there anything because you you guys have what would be maybe a bigger company in the wordpress space um so i'm assuming you have a sort of diverse employee base is there anything that Yoast is doing to better support people with disabilities either on your website or in your own company that maybe other companies could learn from? We talked about this today. And then I think if I look at what we're doing, we're doing a really great job because we look at every individual and make sure that they get what they need. So if we have someone who is not able to work behind a desk all day long, but is working with Yoast, then we'll just figure out how to make that work. So maybe she, she or he could do other um, tasks or something like that. So I think we do a great job in that. The only thing is we have grown and we should have more policies in place. So it's something we, we learn ourselves because if we have those policies and those rules and the agreements, then um, then if 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 that 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 will make it more secure, even if. Um, someone leaves. So perhaps if I leave the company and my ideas on how I wanted to do uh, human resources, um, they shouldn't go away. We should make agreements and policies about that. So that's something we should do ourselves now. <laughs> getting more things in writing. Yeah. Well, we're getting this big yeah. that we we need to to yeah. uh, to make sure that those things are also really good in writing. Um, so we we have, I think we have everything in place. We have buildings with stairs, but if someone is not capable of walking stairs, um, he or she could work everywhere and could go to lunch and could go to the bathroom. That's all taken, taken care of. I think we did a great job with that because we used to have our canteen on the third floor. <laughs> that was not accessible. It's now on the first floor. That's better. <laughs> so so we've, yeah. we've been thinking a, a lot about that. And now we need a policy. I think documenting things, actually, it's not just a big company thing, because all the time in my tiny company, and it went from me as a freelancer and bringing in other people, it was something I had to figure out how to do. If you want to get rid of it being your responsibility, <laughs> you have to write down how to do it, right? So I feel yes. like that that thing of needing to document, it never goes away and is probably apple no matter the size of the company. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and I think so. And, and, and it's it's a good thing. Taco said that if you have people um, wanting to work with you, and you can send them over your policy on accessibility, that's a great thing to do for 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 someone who is perhaps wondering, or that that could be the the one thing that pulls them over to come and work with us. So we need to put that policy in place. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that that's it. We're we're doing it all, except that we're not talking about it probably enough from an hiring perspective mm -hmm. yeah. so um i think 
well, we're currently, uh, well, we're in the running in uh, diversity and inclusion uh, well, competition here in the Netherlands. And we're one of the three nominees in the LGBTQIA plus category. Um, and this is the first time that we participate. And a lot of the questions that we had to answer was like, but of course we do this. How can anyone not think about you know, being inclusive or having this diversity? Um, but we've always done that because we believe that's the right thing to do. And uh, we're now learning to be slightly more vocal about it so that it actually, well, is hopefully attractive for um, new employees and uh, senior developers who are looking for a job. <laughs> oh, I, is that, is maybe, that a, a slight they might be hiring comment right there <laughs> and, and diversifying our 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 group so that that would be great so i think we have um a pretty diverse group but but we can do better than we are currently doing and and these kind of things making it more accessible making it more inclusive would diversify our company even more mm -hmm. yeah for sure i think the more diverse your product team is, the better product you're probably going to put out that mm -hmm. works better for everyone and touches on all the different possible uses that could be out there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know if you got a chance to think about this a little bit. I did send some questions over to you all in advance, but if you were to choose a key area for accessibility improvements in WordPress, what would it be? taco <laughs> yeah so um i was there i was i just joined yoast when uh, mp6 the current admin theme was introduced um that was in 2013 and it hasn't improved since and i'm not sure if you've ever tried to publish anything on a website on your mobile phone, which is the main access to internet for a lot of people around the world, but it's nothing short of horrible. So I think that making that more accessible, making it easier to publish from a mobile phone or a tablet, especially given that such a big part of internet users um, is relying on their phone or tablet for internet access, would be a great, great optimization for WordPress. Yeah, that really is. I, I can only imagine, did it get worse with Gutenberg? <laughs> I mean, we use a block editor. I like the block editor, but I almost wonder if that would be more challenging on a phone than uh, it, tiny MCE. <laughs> in, in my experience, it's slightly easier. Okay. But getting to the point where you actually um, can write a post is challenging enough as is. Oh, wow. That's a really good point. A lot of people don't have a desktop or a laptop, and for them to use WordPress, that that should that should be made available. Yeah, yeah, and there mm -hmm. is an app for both of the uh, the main systems, so iOS and uh, Android, and that does quite a bit in making that more accessible. But just out of the box, just your WordPress site is uh, well. There's room for improvement. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, are there before we wrap up? Are there any other thoughts that you'd be interested in sharing with the WP Accessibility Day audience? Well, we haven't talked about our readability analysis yet, and I think that's the yeah. the, the, I'm, the the feature I'm most proud of. But also, um, I think the feature that'll really help uh, people to write a text that's accessible. Um, Writing short sentences, making sure that you're that that you that you write in a way that 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 it's easier to understand. That makes it so much easier um, for everyone, I think. And 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 so I I really love that feature. Maybe you want to talk more about that, Philomena. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just super nice. It will give you direct feedback on you should use more headings. You should make your paragraph shorter. This. This sentence is too long because it highlights the long sentences, for instance, or you use passive voice too many times. So your text becomes yeah, harder to understand because passive yep. voice is harder to understand. Um, so yeah, again, it's very practical and um, 
Yeah, we use we use it ourselves, of course. <laughs> and, Especially uh, from 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 a mobile phone. If your readers have a mobile yeah. phone, it's it's so hard to read a text that's not readable. So that's a good thing. And we have that analysis in so many languages. I never know how yeah. many, but like hmm. twenty 14. something. Twenty plus. something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Only yeah. not in Danish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not in Danish. That seems we got a lot of questions from yeah. Danish people. Danish is a rather small language area, so it wasn't on our um <laughs> on the initial should... roadmap. Yeah. No. But maybe coming soon. Yeah. yeah, but, the yeah. Readability actually, there's a web content accessibility guideline. It's a triple A guideline, but it it basically says that if your content is higher than the ninth grade. So it's American-ish, like yeah. about the ninth grade, then you need to provide an alternate alternative that is certified in order to meet uh, that AAA yeah. guideline. And I've noticed like a lot of government and higher ed on their websites, they're really trying to focus on readability and get under mm -hmm. that level or yeah. Um, yeah. Or like Not medical true. professionals that are trying to give out like health information to the average patient. Mm -hmm. So readability is really key. Now, we have those laws, I think, in the Netherlands and Belgium as well, that you have to yeah, write yeah. something that's... Um, not, not more than B2 level. I think yeah. those not higher than B2, I think. Yeah, but it's really hard because we've 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 thought about that and then putting that in our analysis that you could say, oh, now you've done the, the triple A status or something, but it's really hard because they didn't make their uh, guidelines as specific so that you can really measure it in a text. We should look into that though. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the, for us, at least on the accessibility front, the web content accessibility guidelines are very like measurable. And so that makes it easier for us Yeah. to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. well, I, think what, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah. It, super quick. I mean, um, when we're talking about readability, what we often hear, and uh, I know that I'm going to trigger Marika a bit, is that, um, the Yoast SEO plugin says that people have to dumb down. And now this I'm going to stop Willoughby. talking. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to write, you don't, you don't have to dumb down your text. And so I did a PhD and my PhD thesis is okayed by our readability analysis. You can, because it, writing short sentences has nothing to do with not being able to write about a difficult topic. It's just, it should, if the topic itself is difficult, the text, the, re the readability of your text shouldn't make it more difficult. So if, mm -hmm. especially when you're writing about something difficult, make sure that people actually understand. And that's what I wanted to say. I'm going to rant about that. <laughs> it's really, really, it's really um, possible to write something about a really difficult topic and then do it in a way that a lot of people understand. It's hard, but it's doable. And I think it pays off, especially for web texts. This was my rant. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if everyone takes anything away from this, go check your text for readability. That's in both the free and the premium versions of Yoast. Yes. And you can get a separate little, I don't know if you guys call them just like a stoplight. That's kind of what <laughs> I think of it. Right. With That's what it is. Green, yellow, yeah. red, or orange. Um, but for readability, and I think it's it's something that I use as well. So it's very helpful. But well, if anyone wants to learn more about Yoast or try out your products, what's the best way for people to get more information or where should they go? Yoast.com. Uh, yes, our okay. website is is absolutely the starting point for everything you want to learn about SEO and accessibility. Um, and if you want to do more courses and learn more about SEO, we also have a Yoast SEO Academy uh, with a lot of free courses on it as well. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. just sign up for that and uh, get started learning. Well. Thank you, all of you, for joining me and chatting with me about SEO and accessibility. And for everyone, just a quick reminder, WordPress Accessibility Day is um, November 2nd through 3rd. It's a 24-hour 
conference. So there should be talks that work no matter what time zone you're in. And it is free to register and registration is now open. And thank you again to Yoast for sponsoring and help making it possible. Great. Thanks so much thank for having you. us today. Yeah. Bye. Really fun being here.